Hi, my name is Mark Birnot. I'm a monetary economist. In this video, I want to talk about, again, the Russian ruble. This time I want to talk about it and what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. The other day I did a video that the Russian ruble is not a currency. It's not money based on Karl Menger, 1871 on money. It has to be a generally accepted medium of exchange. People universally agree in the collective unconsciousness that they just start trading with it. And by that definition or any definition, the ruble is not a currency. I wake up this morning and what happens? The ruble, at least on the peg value, went up against the US dollar. What's happening here? It was 1.1 penny, now it's 1.2. I'm gonna tell you what happened. And when I was a stockbroker, I would get uh, a lot of these guys, these cranks, all their money was stored in CDs at the bank or their checking account. I would say, come on, we can do better than this. A little bit of a sales pitch. And we could. Before me, before the history unfolded, it was one of the greatest booms in history. And sure enough, I put them in some you know, allocation fund and it would go down. In a month, they'd panic and sell out, go back to their checking account. They missed on millions. The, the guys that stayed with me, we all got rich, okay? But the point is, there's something called, you can't check it every single second of the day. That's the worst thing you do. You can't be, these things fluctuate. The ruble's going up because there's a dead cat bounce. Nobody's taking ruble. It's art, first of all, it's artificial rate. If you go to Telegram and look at the real rates uh, on the, let's say, free market, it's like 500th of a penny. Well, let's look at the official rate. That's a dead cat bounce. These are junk men going to the scrap heap. Okay, I've seen it with stocks. Junk men going to the scrap heap hoping to make pennies off penny stocks and pink slips, uh, sheets. It doesn't work. You're going to lose. If you believe in the ruble so much, go for it. And, you know, the Russian oligarchs, they don't use the ruble. They use number one currency, fact, they use dollar. Number two, euro. Number three, great British pound sterling. And then maybe they have some gold in crypto. The Russians in the metro, the metro Russians, you know, if you take the really uh, elite cities, St. Pete and Moscow, Pan Am, that's 12.42% of the population, but only a fraction of them live in the city other than a concrete block with aluminum nickel pans and a pittance of disposable income. And, you know, you see a lot of Instagrammers and they're all done up and they're showing you the top grocery stores you might see in London or San Francisco, but that's not reality. People, Russians don't have disposable income. The ruble is, is basically right now not even an internal currency. If I was a Russian, I, I would be buying tangible goods. Go to Hammer Barn and buy, you know, concrete or whatever you guys have in Russia. Maybe it's hammer and sickle or hoe and sickle or whatever. You know, we have, you know, if you guys know Hammer Barn, you watch Bluey and stuff. Buy concrete, hand tools, buy potatoes, stock up. You say, oh, this could never happen in this glorious Russia. Yeah, people in North Korea are starving. I live in Florida. Here's proof. These are six water moccasin eggs. A lot of people say, oh, look at the economist. He's in the forest. He's not a real. Please have some respect. I live in a swamp. I'm going to relocate these water moccasin eggs to, uh, Another swamp. All life is sacred. Hope they don't have to. <laughs> well, I am talking here because the young ones tend to be reckless with their venom. Anyway, going back to the ruble. Where was I? Junk men go into the scrap heap. It's not traded. The oligarchs don't use it. Maybe the professionals might use it very quickly, but don't, don't hold ruble. It's not a store of value. And I'm telling this because I want everybody, the whole world, to be better off. You got to store things. Russia can have severe shortages of food next year. And I'm an economist. I'm not just saying that. I know what's going on in their internal economy. It's not creating value in any way. Everything is going to some non-constructive purpose. Don't hold ruble, hold potatoes. So this dead cat bounce, this sucker's rally is a known phenomenon. If you see it go up even more, let's say to 1.6 penny, 1.7, that that's a dizzying high that is a dizzying high you just want to run from 
And, you know, people again, oh, you know, the ruble is backed by gold. The ruble is supposed to be 5,000 rubles for an ounce of gold. That's about 57 USD. 57 USD. No, an ounce of gold is like 2,000. 340, you know, five dollars or whatever it is, the uh, spot trade today. I'd be arbitraging all day long. So you guys relax when you see this ruble go up. Don't check it every day. No, it's a dead cat bounce. It's a sucker's rally. It's a sign that it's the last breath of life of a ruble in a failing economy. And a lot of YouTubers out there are predicting this and you guys are checking it every day. I'm not talking today. I'm, t I'm talking, you know, one, two years in the future. And I never make predictions, dire predictions. I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. I believe everyone and every person, life form, deserves a chance in this life. So if you're a Russian and you own ruble, stock, go to Hammer Barn stock, or whatever, Hoe and Sickle or whatever you guys have again. Stock up on wood, concrete, lumber, hand tools. Watch out. Look at these homesteading videos. Check out how to store potatoes. And I think you guys know it because that's real. That will carry you through. My friend, I'm in Florida. My friends from Venezuela, no joke. They're eating rats. They're hunting rats there. When you have a non-capitalistic economy, it's not a production problem. You can have all the fertilizer in the world. Knock yourself out with those toxic chemicals. It's a distribution problem. You're gonna have you're gonna have severe distribution problems, unproductive sectors. You have labor shortages. Because everything's going into the non-productive sector. This ruble is vaporware. The oligarchs don't use it. That's factual. They use dollars in their BMWs and, and by BMWs, BMWs and their yachts and their, and their kids are going to the elite schools in the West. They don't believe in Russia themselves. Russia will be a footnote in history soon. People will say, Russia, what was that? Oh, yeah, it was dark times in, in the world when the world is a better place. So I just want to give you confidence that if you see the ruble go down, I mean up, don't worry. It's a sucker's rally. Think of my story as a stockbroker. It's a dead cat bounce. You can look it up. My name is, and, and if you don't believe me, just go back to the economic theory, the quantity theory of money. Inflation, the official inflation is like over 7%. In the U.S., it's like 3%, a little 32 Quantity theory of money would say that doesn't make sense that it's appreciating in value. Knut Vixell, natural rate of interest, doesn't make sense. Value of a currency in the long run is always going to be attributed to the underlying uh, economy. And Russia doesn't have an economy. Maybe in 2022 is uh, a little bit smaller than Italy, but now it's nothing. It's hollow. That currency is going down, and I am going to just grab the popcorn and love it. In the meantime, I have some water moccasins to release, and you guys have a great day. I'll keep you updated on this ruble in the Russian economy, but don't worry about a dead cat bounce. My name is Mark Bernat. I'm a monetary economist. Have a great day. Thank you very much.